Welcome to Nourish Technologies. I am Bangar Raju and this is uh, part 5 video of our uh, collections. In the part 3 and part 4 uh, videos, I explained in the part 3 about uh, generic collections and in the part 4, I explained what is collections. And in this video, we will just have the continuation for the generic collections only. In the part 2, we have discussed about a, a collection called hash table hash table and this hash table is actually used for storing the values in a key value combination. The values are going to be stored in key and value combination and list what we discussed uh, in the part 3 and also the array list what we discussed in the part 1. These two are going to store the values with index as a key and this index is predefined and we do not have any control on it. And to overcome the problem, we use the hash table. Hash table will store key and values. You can give your own keys and your own values. So, like this, coming to generic collections, hash table was replaced as dictionary. There is no hash table here. The hash table was replaced as dictionary. Uh, when you are creating the instance, you are required to pass two types for it. One is key type, T key, then nothing but the key type and the T value. The list class just takes only t. The type of values we want to store in this, but dictionary takes two types. One is the key type and second one is the value type. Here it is only the value type or more clearly I will say t value. So, it is only the value, type of values. No need to give the keys because the keys are predefined and the key is nothing but integer. And when we talk about dictionary, we can pass a key type as well as a value type also. Let us just use it. Just starting a class, we will name it as dictionary collection, dictionary collection, static void main, and right now here, dictionary. And when we are creating the instance of this dictionary. It is asking us to specify the key type and the value type. I want to just store uh, some keys and values. I want to use the keys as string and coming to values, different types of values I wanted to store. For storing different types of values, I am using a object. So, key is going to be string and value is going to be an object. dt is equals to new and then you can start storing values into the dictionary. Do one thing, what we stored in the hash table on the ray, I will store a set of values like this, just a minute. Yeah. I am storing a set of values into this. Yes. You can see that the keys are strings and the values are different types. I have integer type, string type, a double type, again integer type, string type, three different types of values are there. So, here uh, we have used object because it is object, it is possible to store any type of value. We want to store a boolean value, we can store a boolean value. Now, we want to access all these values now. How to access? For each. I want to pick all the keys. How to pick all the keys? In the hash table, to pick all the keys, we just discussed about a property called keys. It returns all the keys. And here, Key is a which type object type, we said object key. In case of hash table, we said object key. But now coming to the current program, string key in dt dot keys. The same property was available to you here also. And the keys are here string types. And console dot right line will print you all the keys all the keys you can access now. We get access to all the keys and with this case, it is possible to print the values plus a colon space, again a plus and dt of key, dt of key, where dt of key will return you the value corresponding to that key and will print you all the keys and values. And one thing we notice, Dictionary will store the values in sequence, but hash table did not store the values in the sequence at all. If you just 
check the part 2 video or I will run it here you can just see hash collection in that we got the values but not in the sequence but if you just watch the dictionary right now the dictionary will print you all the values in a sequence. So, this is how we can just work with the generic collections. So, we have just used a list earlier for storing integer type of values and right now a dictionary which is going to be used for storing strings and object where string represents the key value and object represents the actual value. And remember when you are working with generic collections, when we are working with generic collections the type of values, the type of values uh, we can store in this collections need not be a predefined types only like integer, float, something, something. What I am telling is in case of a generic collection the type of values we want to store under the collections need not be predefined types only like int, float, char, string, bool, bool etc. Then it can also be user defined types also bool etc. But it can also be some user defined type also. It can also be user defined type also. What is that user defined type also? We can define our own type and we can store the type of values into the list. For example, I am adding a new class here and I will call this class as a customer. The class name is customer and this class I wanted to define some attributes of this particular customer like what customer ID, name of the customer, job of the customer, salary of the customer sorry name of the customer, balance of the customer, the city of the customer like address, phone number different details I wanted to store. So, some few attributes will take like what for this customer I wanted to represent with some few attributes okay three attributes I am just four attributes will take uh, one is customer id customer id and second one is name and third one is the city and fourth one is the balance four attributes so to represent the four attributes i'm defining four properties in this class now public int cast id get set i'm using the automatic properties next public string name gets it and public string city get set and finally public double balance get set. There is a class defined here called as customer. Now another class I will take here class test customer static void main. In this I want to create a list now list a list here t t represents the type of values in our earlier example uh, where in the part 3 we have declared a list for storing integer type values same way you can take strings or any of the things I can also say employee. I am sorry, I can also say customer. What is customer? What is customer? It is a new user defined type. I can use a customer here. We will call it as customers is equals to new list of customer. New list of customer. Like this, I can just store customer type values. Now, in this list we can add customer instances. Let us create instances of the class customer here. Customer C1 is equals to new customer and in this I am just assigning the values by using the object initializer 101 some name Scott Hyderabad and some balance of 25,000 
name equals to next here we need to write city equals to and finally balance equals to like this we can assign a set of values one more instance i want to create There's some four instances i'm creating two three and four smith dave david chennai delhi and only hyderabad there this is 29000 34000 59000 four instances now i wanted to add all the four instances to the list how to add customers dot add we can just go for using the customers dot add method and we can just add it customers dot add and you notice here add here what's it taking customer item it will take your customer item so we can add an instance of the class customer c1 next customers dot add c2 same way customers dot add c3 and customers dot add c4 and still without adding all the values each and every value like this uh, we can just also try like this what customers dot add range we can store all the values in a collection and at a time pass that collection at this location we can store all the four values in a collection and we can just pass the values at a time for this uh, location here at this particular location so that is also possible okay uh, add range at a time it will allow us to add multiple items okay leave it now i'm adding all the four items now there are four items which are present in the list i want to access it now so to access it i'm just writing for each customer obj in customers you can access all the customers now one by one so now customers is a collection of four customer instances you are picking one by one from that and when you are picking the items now obj first time contains c1 and c1 represents the customer scott and remember it is internally associated four attributes and now we can print all those values console dot right line i want to say console dot right line and i want to start printing all the values obj dot cast id plus some space i'm adding here obj dot name plus obj dot city plus obj dot balance you may be having a confusion here uh, uh, what are these four values actually this obj represents a customer means an instance of the customer and do remember customer is internally associated with four attributes customer id name city and balance and those four values are what i'm accessing in this place so i'll print you all the four customer values now console dot read line and finally let me run the class test customer all the four so the point to note is just not only it's not only storing of predefined types here we can also store user defined types in case of generic collection the type of values we want to store in the collection need not be predefined types only so predefined types only like int float char string bool etc but it can also be some user defined types also some user defined type also we can store okay so uh, here the user defined type is customer and this customer has four attributes and these four attribute values are at a time stored into the list but not individually as a customer so this is a complex type why i am calling complex type because it is associated with four values at a time i am calling it the complex type i am adding these values into the list of customer what is the name customers 
So, this is the process how you just can work with the generic collections. Thank you for watching the video. For more videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel Naresh IT. Thank you.